Good evening, everybody. We are about to get tonight's meeting started. We have an awesome guest speaker tonight. And uh, everybody made it to a new month. So the floor is yours, Councilman Reeves. All right, how's everybody doing? Hope all is well. Happy August to you. And to some people, it was the first day back to school. And so hope everybody's prepared for a good school year. Um, today, is our guest on? Yes, would you like me to introduce her? Yes, go ahead and introduce her. As a, this is an awesome opportunity for um, what she's gonna bring forth and some information. Uh, and they actually have some things that uh, land the things that they have down here in South Fulton. And we're going to see how we can uh, get a collaboration. Go ahead, Tamiko. All right. Good evening, everybody. By special request, we have the interim executive director from the Development Authority of Fulton County, Ms. Sarah Elizabeth Langford. Everybody, please tell her, congrats, thank you for coming. Thank you, and, and guess what? You know, that interim title, my board just voted about a week ago to remove that, so it's no longer interim. So now I'm the executive director of the Development Authority of Fulton County, so I'm really honored about that. So. Congratulations. You, are Congratulations. You your first, are we your first interview official? You know what? Um, I guess so. You know, I've spoken at other meetings, but this is my, um, I guess, my first largest community meeting. So, yeah, this is an honor to be here with you all. So, uh -oh. thank you. <laughs> Calvin Reeves loves being the first. Good, 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 good. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, you want me to just go ahead and start? Yes, yes please tell us about your, um, your role and what the organization does for the community. Yep. Okay. Well, um, just, you know, I'm born and raised in um, South Fulton County in Southwest Atlanta and went to University of Michigan for college and then law school at Howard. And then I came back to Atlanta and worked for an affordable housing developer, a senior housing developer for about 10 years. And then more recently started at the Development Authority of Fulton County. And what we do at the Development Authority is really provide incentives for developers who have difficulty with their projects penciling out. And by that, I mean, we often have developers that apply to us for a ta property tax reduction. Uh, many times they're developers who are trying to do very large commercial developments and they tell us, we go through the numbers and they explain that they're having some difficulty penciling out the deal. And so then we determine the investment in the community, the jobs that they are bringing to the community, the value that they're bringing to the community and provide a reduction in their property taxes for about 10 years. And what we found is that as we all know, um, on the South side of our County, you know, there are a lot of differences between the North side and the South side. Of course, we all know on the North side, we have Awesome developments like Avalon that really have created a dynamic, really halo effect and have had a very positive dynamic impact on the north side. So really my dream and vision is for us, like in South Fulton, to determine ways that we can really mirror that same type of excitement and quality development. And that's that's not easy, you know, it's, it's step by step by step, but I think there is so much power in community and in us as the community holding our developers accountable. So sometimes I will meet with developers and talk about the south side of our county, South Fulton, and they will say, you know, straight out that sometimes they can't charge as high of rents as they want or income levels are different to build and bring in the retail that they want. And, you know, they have many, many different excuses. So then it is our role at the development authority to work with that developer and really put our heads together and decide what incentives or what tools that we currently have or that we could even create 
uh, to help those developers bring awesome development to uh, the South Side where it's so badly needed and so much potential. Uh, we all know from living on the South Side that for certain types of amenities, you have to drive too far North and that's, that's just unacceptable. So we at the Development Authority of Fulton County are working towards that slowly but surely. Um, recently, as I said, when I talk to developers and they express difficulty with getting their deals to pencil out, the chairman of the board of the Development Authority is Marty Turpo. And he said, you know, let's think about uh, additional tools that we can create to assist developers more so that they are more easily able to possibly do development in areas that are not like the north side of Fulton County and areas that typically aren't used to such awesome development. So uh, he helped us develop a 15 year property tax incentive. So previously we had the 10 year reduction in property taxes. Now we've just created new schedules for an additional longer uh, property tax reduction. So we're hoping that that will help us help developers lead to uh, really high quality developments. And then in addition to that, uh, working with my board members, I have Kyle Lamont who is on the board and he's the chair of our strategic initiatives committee. And he noticed that at the Development Authority, we had a sizable amount of reserve funding. And Kyle said, you know, we want to deploy some of this funding into the community. It shouldn't be sitting in our bank account at the Authority, it should be used for community initiatives. So he came up with a new grant program and this grant program is for community members to apply to us and will receive grants up to uh, $500,000 for programs dealing with quality housing, quality educational programs, jobs and employment, and small business growth. So that grant application is on our website, developfultoncounty.com. And we're hoping that that's one way that we as an authority can make a more direct impact into the community. But I am here uh, to answer any questions. Like I said, my goal as the executive director is to really help us as a community determine how we can assist developers in bringing high quality development that we all are proud of to the south side of Fulton County. And I'm excited to do that. I'm excited to listen to you all and hopefully develop new tools at the authority and be responsive to your needs and make sure that we're holding our developers accountable and responsive to community needs. So council member and your team, thank you. Thank you for all that you all are doing. And please view me as a partnership. I'm here for you and I'm open to answer any questions and, and listen and learn. So thank you very, very much. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for that presentation. One of the things that I wanna uh, uh, kind of uh, focus in on as the strategic initiatives program and those grants uh, within the community for uh, small business growth and community as well is like what particular criteria um, and of course, we're going to go to the website and get educated on that as well. But what particular criteria can you tell us today that uh, give us some example projects that uh, communities can apply for or, uh, a, you know, 501c3s or, or, uh, can apply for and specific projects that those can go uh, funding in the communities? Yeah, you know, we purposely at the authority kept the requirements somewhat open because we wanted the community to guide us. So we didn't want to create false requirements and kind of box organizations in. So we purposely wanted it very vague. So when it comes to quality housing, if that is a housing development, um, that would qualify. If it's a program to help individuals rehab their existing uh, uh, development. So we, we wanted it very, very open education quality and there, you know there are such differences all throughout the county so that's another reason that we kept the requirements kind of open because and there are about 15 different cities within our county so in you know Union City or South Fulton there are very different needs than you know in Johns Creek so we we didn't want to really box it in so as long as it fits within the guidelines of housing education jobs and small business 
And in the application, you'll find this online, we ask specifically for the applicant to let us know how is this going to benefit the community and what current problem or issue will this problem address? So council member, we, we purposely just kept it more open so that the applicants could really guide and, and let us know. And really we would follow the, the guidance of the community because even when we were creating this, this uh, grant, uh, Kyle, the, the chair of the committee, knew that there are often times that developers come into our communities and aren't as responsive to community needs as they should be. And some of that is just the nature of development. You know, if the, if the zoning and the code and the law allows for a certain type of development, you know, we do live in a capitalist society and, and developers want to make money even though sometimes their developments might not be totally in line with what the community wants. So we wanted to make sure that our grant program is actually responding to the needs of the community. So I, I, it sounds a little bit open and we wanted it that way so that we could be guided and led by the community. Awesome, awesome. And in the application, you'll see we ask for um, audits and tax returns and uh, proof of a uh, business license and you know basic requirements to show that it's a legitimate organization, nonprofit or for profit. But in in term beyond that, it we kept it purposely a little open. Absolutely. If, if please anybody else open up the questions because I do and I know that the development authority has some property too. It owns some property along Buffington Road uh, for development as well on this area on this side of town. And so y'all have quite a few parcels. And uh, one of the things that we are uh, want to look at is bringing um, technological jobs and technolo technology companies here, trying to make that attractive for them as well. As we do know, uh, Google is building them a $5 million facility right down the street in Fairmont. And so we want to try to attract and get some of those dollars as well. And I'm glad that you said that because a lot of times we've had communities come to us and tell us that you know, we are sick of just warehouses and warehouses and more warehouses. So we're making sure that we're responsive to that and balancing. And sometimes if there is a industrial or more warehouse based development, we work with the community to make sure that if that is a project that our board considers that we make sure that they have gone to the community and understood the community needs and have letters of support from the community. Um, so that is what we are trying to do is just be, be responsive. And you mentioned the parcels. A lot of that is really owned by the, div, um, by the land bank authority. And so that, that is another more coordinated effort. Not too long ago, I met with Dick Anderson, um, the county manager, and we talked about a more coordinated effort between the land bank authority, perhaps providing parcels of land to a development us as an authority providing incentives, um, but basically all of us putting our resources together to ensure that developers' projects are able to pencil out and we're able to have quality development. Absolutely, a, a great collaborative effort. So that's what it's gonna take as a collaborative team to try to push these quality developments forward. Yeah. Please, anybody else on the line, if y'all have any questions for the executive director. Hey, 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 councilman. Uh, hey, 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 council. Hey, councilman. How y'all doing? All right. Hey, Ms. Jane. Hey, and uh, hello, Miss Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, and congratulations. Thank you. On your new adventure. Thank so, you. Okay, just so that I understand, <laughs> development authority, right? Mm -hmm. Because. There's two development authorities, right? There's like a community, and then there's a um, um, just the South Fulton area. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's two. Well, you so, know what? There are development authorities all across the state. So there are a lot right. of them. Yep. Right. But I'm just talking about South Fulton now, because mm -hmm. I think now, and Councilman Reed, you can, you can kind of help me out with this, because I know when Mark Baker was um, the councilman over one uh, development authority. And I might be getting confused, I'm not sure. No, we have the South Fulton, it's the South Fulton Development Authority. 
okay. and they have the Fulton County Development Authority, the two oh, different ones. The county and right. the, okay, then, so that's right, the county and the uh, South Fulton. Okay, so it has to be a company or an organization that applies for this um, loan that you're talking about, the grant. Yes. Yep. An existing business, so a, a for-profit or a non-profit. And when you look at the application, you'll see that we request just some, some due diligence, like any application would request financial statements or audits, a certificate of business, you know, just basic, basic, uh, you know, documents. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And now you talked about, you know, um, the property taxes, that you all are either waiving or uh, for the business that comes here right for 10 years. And then you said you all extended it? Yes. So, you know, we basically had been talking with a lot of developers because our focus is really the south side of Fulton County right. for mm -hmm. natural reasons. I'm from mm -hmm. the south side of the county. The chairman of the board is also from the south side of the county. And all of us know the differences. We see the north side that is extremely vibrant and tons of, of quality development. But we see the south side that has a lot of needs that are, that are unmet and so much potential for right. all of us to be frequenting um, awesome developments that we should have in our, in our own community. So when we were talking to the developers, they basically just told us it's too difficult for them uh, for a variety of different reasons to get their projects to basically make as much enough profit as they would like to make. So that's where we come in and say, how, what resources do we have to help them achieve the profit levels that they want to make and that they will then feel comfortable developing in areas like the south side of the county? And so we increased the years that we would provide property tax reductions for. And this is a very new program, and it's really just uh, an example of us trying to fulfill our responsibility if there's not enough quality development in some area of the county, then the issue is what are we gonna do about it? So we created a, a new tool for us to use. It's extremely new. So we're hoping that it will work, but we're still open to creating even more tools. So when there are developers who say, you know, this new schedule isn't helping me, I need additional tools. Then we still will, are, are continuously going back to the drawing board to figure out what we can create within the bounds of the law to help get these development done. Do we have any projects so, uh, for the South Side so far? Do we have any projects we're looking at? Any? Yeah, there are a lot that we're looking at. There is one that I'm talking to, which is a film studio. Uh, there's another retail housing. Um, so there, there, there are constantly projects that are coming to us to be evaluated and for us to work with them. And we also have a great partnership with the county's economic development arm, which is led by a guy named Samir. It's called Select Fulton. And that's really an arm of the county to help businesses determine where they can locate, what land is available, what incentives are available. Um, so I'm constantly seeking out developers to come to South Fulton, but then there's also developers that are often seeking us out. And oftentimes they, you know, maybe have identified some land in North Fulton and we might try to point them to South Fulton. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a, a balancing act. There's developers coming to us and also us seeking out developers. And if you know of any developers, I'm, I want to meet them. I want to talk with them. And I view that as, as my job. Right. Now, one more question. Okay. Yeah. Lumbo, right. So, now, it, okay, so I know that's you know, the element. Oh, I just said one more. Girl. I know. Come on. Okay. <laughs> so when we're looking for this land, now, can it be, can you all consider like sidewalks or you know, these projects that you can consider? I'm just asking, okay? Sidewalks and, um, you know, cutting of the overgrown trees and, and, and grass here and better lighting. Now, I know they got some kind of lighting um, uh, survey going on or whatever, but is that something that can be considered as well when you all are seeking out these uh, developers or they're seeking us out? You know, um, I feel like in order for us to 
create and live in a community that we all are worthy of and proud of, we mm-hmm. have to find ways to get that done. Like if there yeah. are overgrown trees or sidewalks that need fixing, you know, that's yeah. not like exactly what we had thought about in our grant. Mm-hmm. But if there mm-hmm. is a, a organization who applies for some of the grant funding and wants to fix those things, or, you know, if I talk with you after the meeting and we talk with some folks at the county to just figure out, you know, sometimes it's as basic as us as community members That's reaching right. out to our county commissioners and pointing it out to them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I just say that to say some, there are some creative ways that we can try to get that done. And when we have developers who are looking at an area, like if we have a developer that selects a site and then is coming to us for incentives, a lot of times I will work with that developer and I'll say, okay, you're requesting incentives for from us what are you going to do for this respective community in exchange? And then I'll know, I'll I'll remember, I'll talk to you or we'll go to community meetings and I'll say, Miss Jane mentioned all these overgrown shrubs and a sidewalk that needs fixing. So a lot of times that's like a bargaining tool I can use with the developer and I can say, okay, we're providing this tax incentive for you. We need, as part of your development, this sidewalk to be fixed and all of this shrubbery to be fixed. And that, that is right. a very easy request from a developer exactly. or a developer when they're doing off sometimes, you know, $400 million project right. to fix a sidewalk and to fix some shrubs. That's extremely easy for them. So if okay. we are in that situation where we can right. bargain with them, then that's, that's an easy fix. But if we don't have a developer who's looking uh, to right. do a development there, then we don't have that tool. But I can still get with you and get with council member and and try to put our heads together because we have to remember we are community constituents. If if there's shrubs overgrown or a sidewalk that's messed up, we have a right to go to our government right. officials and work with them. And it's not always that's easy. Right. We we yell and we talk right. to council member. We want him to fix everything yesterday. Right. Yeah. Um, but we we can be helpful too, and I can be helpful in terms of going to some of the commissioners and, and just putting our heads right. together to figure out how we can get it done in a creative way. Okay, great. Thank you. Alrighty, I have um, two quick questions and then Ms. Collins will be next. Um, the first one is, so what if there are, um, you know, the biggest problem with minority um, entrepreneurs for the sake of the example is maybe they have the goals and aspirations, but they don't have the credit to get the funding for them to do business with traditional lending. So what if someone wanted to open um, restaurants on this side of town that were gonna be like um, uh, diff- more variety restaurants where they're willing to do the restaurants, but they don't have the funding, but the side of town wants those kind of restaurants and they don't have the perfect credit or they've not had those kind of businesses before is the first question. The second question is what if a nonprofit wanted to build um, a building on this side that was going to provide entrepreneurship training and development, um, but they are a new nonprofit and they don't have million dollar budgets already. Okay, well, first with the restaurant or the small business, first of all, they can definitely apply to for our grant funding so if it's someone who we, small business is one of the categories and and that would fit under jobs too because with their new restaurant they would be em- employing people so that would fit under the category of bringing jobs and also small business growth so they can definitely apply for that funding and perhaps that can be leveraged and help them get a loan or just use towards their uh, new business development and then you asked about the nonprofit that was Uh, perhaps trying to start new, they can also apply for the grant funding. But also separate from the grant funding, I view it as my role as trying to encourage economic development throughout our county. My door is always open. So if you want to put them in touch with me so I can try to connect them with the right county resources Um, I'm more than willing to do that. Like I said, we have Select Fulton that's run by Samir and his whole uh, entity is based on community development and helping businesses who want to locate in Fulton County or grow in Fulton County. So they can 
apply for our grant funding, but then also separately, I can be in touch with them to figure out what resources the county has and how we can help them. Because I always say, if, if not us, then who? If you and I don't work with that business owner to help them figure out the resources, then, then who's gonna do it? Nobody. If, you, if all of us, if Council Member Reeves doesn't organize and have his meetings like this, and we don't come together as a community, then it's not going to happen. So I, I'm willing to figure out there's a lot of resources. I mean, every day I'm working with different developers and sometimes I am working with very large experienced developers who are willing to partner with smaller developers or female or black owned developers uh, to get projects done. So there are a lot of just creative solutions that we can look into. Ms. Collins? Yes. Uh Oh, boy. Councilman Reeves, were you going to say Hello? something? No, no, I was just saying that's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a couple of questions. First of all, on the uh, grant funding, you said that you would, uh, you have grants to do home repairs. Is that through individually or uh, company? And I'll. You know I'm sorry. No, I we I didn't I didn't mean to say that. I was just that was just an example. I said that we have a portion of grant funding, and this is new for us as an authority. So we have never done this before. So it is a very open-ended grant application, such that any organization that qualifies can apply for these grant funding. So that was just an example that if there was an organization that did repairs in the community, they could apply for some of this funding. So we, we don't have that. We just have a general amount of funds that we want to deploy into the community. So that was just an example of an organization that could apply. Okay, my next question is, when you talk to these developers, do, do they ever look at the infrastructure? Is that a requirement to look at the infrastructure before they start uh, these new bills? Um, it's... I don't, I think they do typically what is in their best interest for their project. So if they feel as a developer that they need to look at the infrastructure around or at that project to benefit their development, then yes, they will do that. If there are some code requirements that they have to fulfill in order to complete their development, then yes, they will do that. So you and I know they kind of typically do what's in their best interest, you know, similar to any business that's a for-profit business but again that's where my office comes in and we work with them and we work with the community so like Miss Jane said if there are some community issues that the community community has identified then I can you kind of bargain and negotiate with the developer and say we're providing these property tax reductions for you but we need you to look at and consider doing some of these things for the community and typically what we've done before there's sometimes there's like a uh, traffic roundabouts that a neighborhood may want or different uh, traffic lights that a neighborhood wants put in. There's sometimes there's contributions that a community might want the developer to make to this local school system. So there's a variety of different bargaining tools that we can use if a developer is requesting incentives for us. But do they have to look at infrastructure? Not there is not really a requirement to do development. All they have to do is develop according to the local laws. Did I answer? Right, your question? Dan? Um, Dan? So I was running for the unmute button. Uh, Sarah, I have two questions. The first question is going to determine where we go with the second question. Yeah, the first question is, is where does the money come from for your organization? The, to answer that question, Dan, the money to fund the Development Authority of Fulton County comes from a percentage of the projects that we do. So that's, that's not an easy position for us to be in because every single project we are, uh, the board is evaluating to determine whether or not they feel it deserves incentives. So ideally, if those projects are in more challenged areas or areas that are more underserved, then the board feels a lot more comfortable uh, granting those incentives. 
And then it's, you know, kind of like a, a perfect marriage. We are able to approve the incentives for that project and our authority gets a, a small percentage of those uh, projects that are done. So it comes 100% from a percentage of fees of the, the uh, projects that we approve as a board. Hmm. Okay, so you would say that it's self-sustaining. Yes, it is. Yep, because we don't get our revenue from any other source. We don't get anything from the county. We don't get anything from cities. It's all from the projects that the board approves. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Yep. And um, just, oh, I'm sorry, council member. No, I was just going to say, is there any other questions? But go ahead, feel free. Well, no, I was just going to let remind you all, I know you know this council member and your team, but just how much power there is in the community. Please view me as someone you can come to and ask for resources, but especially in working with developers, we at the authority are able to really negotiate and make sure developers are being responsive to the needs of our community. So just just remember that there's there's a we have a lot of power between all of us. Absolutely. Any more questions? Yes, I had another one. Um, so what if? Oh, I'm sorry. There's a comment. Are there conflicts between the Fulton County Development Authority and the city's development authorities? You know, we try to work hand in hand, but they're really. Um, complementary uh, authorities. Really, they are authorities that care about the local community and want to provide resources for the purpose of encouraging development that's needed. So there are really no conflicts because we have the same exact goals. And ideally, um, and this is where my leadership comes in, I will do a better job in working hand in hand with the different authorities, with council member and different local officials to make sure that uh, we are all bringing as much resource and power to opportunities as we can. So if we have a possible developer who's looking at an opportunity, we can all come to the table with the appropriate resources behind us to try to get that quality development done. So no, they're, all, they're not conflicts. We have the same goals, which is encouraging economic development. Another question in the chat is, can these grants be used to help small HOAs, or, which are nonprofits, to enhance the common areas for the community for improved quality of life for its residents? Uh, in general, I would say yes, because we, again, we kept the requirements very open. And so there's a housing uh, bucket of funds. And so I would encourage, and also if, if there's an organization that has some questions, they're more than welcome to contact me and we can talk, talk through it um, just because I don't want anyone wasting their time. But if you, if you go online and look at the uh, application, you'll see it's relatively short. We tried to make it not very complicated, but there is a housing uh, bucket that it sounds like that would fit into applying under. So the next question, can a nonprofit be formed to request the funding to oversee repairs for senior citizen homes that don't have the funding to do the repairs and oversee the fund, the, that process, that project management? You know, when we created the application, we wanted, we ideally would have organizations that had some experience um, managing whatever program they're applying for. So perhaps if that's something you're interested in, I mean, I worked in senior housing before and I, I wouldn't say they can't apply, but it might be better maybe if uh, we could talk to the owner of the senior housing and they could apply the, the management or because I mean, that, that is something that, um, you know, I have a lot of experience with when it comes to senior rehab. So even if we reached out to the Department of Community Affairs as a tax credit program that often is used for senior repairs. So we didn't really have in mind a new or newly formed organization applying just because they wouldn't really have experience that we ideally would want. Um, but I do think there are other ways that maybe we could talk about to accomplish the same goal of rehabbing seniors homes.
I'm looking in the chat. Let's see. If there's an industrial area for warehouses and trucks are needed, how would you address the additional traffic of trucks if you leave the infrastructure situation to the companies? Um, well, someone was just asking, um, why do we leave the infrastructure needs to the companies? And that's, that's an area where we would negotiate with the company. If they are coming to us for incentives, then we have that power to make sure that they are being responsive to the community. So, and this is this has happened in some projects where the community says, we don't want this traffic, so they need to build another right away for this business so that trucks aren't coming down our neighborhood streets. So if if the organization or the company is require is requesting incentives for us, then we don't have to leave it up to them. So I guess I was saying if a company is not coming to us for incentives, then they have more ability to not be as responsive as we would like to the community needs. But if they are coming to us, then we can negotiate with them and make sure that the community desires are incorporated into their project. You said the developers have to meet with the community and get their buy-in as a stakeholder. Who is representing the community when they have to do that? Um, that that's not a legal requirement. That is just something that my office knows is important. So you typically they are going to community meetings. So when we talk with them, we'll say, who did you meet with? And they'll have to show us and we'll talk with an elected official. We'll talk with Council Member Reeves of, to make sure that they have reached out to the community and attended a community meeting. Typically, it's like an MPU meeting or just a respective community meeting. And we ask them for um, community support lever letters. And typically we, we do hear from community members about whether they support the project or not. How do y'all address where they may do one type of funding um, development with maybe a full, um, full scope of, of home, housing on the north side and and it, then they come to the south side and scale it down how do you address that for their tax credits um that's difficult for us to do because just from a legal perspective if they are a developer they are allowed to develop what they want wherever wherever the law allows so then that's really up to us as community members and us as an authority to try and work, to try and work with them and help them understand that our community deserves high quality development just like they're doing on other areas of town and then when they tell me well we can't make as much money in certain areas then we try to get creative and say okay what can we contribute as an authority to help them feel more comfortable with uh, how the deal is penciling out. So it is a very tough problem that, you know, I haven't a hundred percent been able to address properly because, you know, there's so many different issues from racial issues to socioeconomic issues that um, we try to address, but at the end of the day, it's very hard because if the law allows a developer to build something in a certain area, then they do, by law, have the right to do that. And I was up with the, you know, we can um, use the bargaining tool, as I said, of our incentives, but it's, it's a very difficult issue. And it's, it's a balance between, um, you know, sometimes I talk with developers and they say, well, there's the income levels are not what we would want them to be on the south side of town. So then I'll say, okay, well, how, how are some ways we can diversify more and get more uh, individuals? So then we go and try to recruit corporate headquarters to come to the south side, or we try to um, upskill, upskill and um, help employee employers um, develop skills that employers would want um, for, you know, a Google or a Microsoft or Amazon, not warehouses, but corporate headquarters to come. So it's, it's really a multifaceted approach. And, you know, sometimes I say I need like a PhD in real estate development in order to try to address all the different issues. Um, because at the end of the day, a lot, you know, um, a lot of times we're working with developers who are in the business of development to make money, period. 
and they want to make as much profit as they can make. Um, so we're, you know, that's kind of what we're battling against. And now actually it's, it's I just sat on the panel the other day with um, a developer by the name of Rob Jones and he, his development company is called Cityscape. And he basically said that because he um, is a socially responsible person that cares about the community, he made a decision that he was going to be willing to make less profit so that he could put more money into his development and, and create high quality developments, even though there were different ways that he could make more profit for himself. So some of what we're asking is developers have to become more socially conscious and understand that we don't want you developing in our communities only to make as much money as you can. Part of your mission, and we hope, this is kind of idealistic, but we, we would ideally like developers to be socially conscious and understand that even if the income levels aren't exactly how they would want them to be, or if in South Fulton, they're not exactly the same as Johns Creek, we still deserve quality development. And there are ways that developers must be socially conscious to help our communities get there. So it's kind of a, it's a difficult issue, but we're all in this together and, and working on it together, but, but it's not easy and, there, and there's no easy solution. But all we can do is, you know, kind of use the resources that we have and I think as time goes on, I do find more and more there are actually more developers who are understanding of the issues that we're talking about, that no matter what the, you know, the color of a community or the income level of a community, all of us deserve high quality development. And sometimes in our society, that requires um, a corporation or a business to make allowances in different areas. And Rob Jones, you'll have to look, look his business up. Cityscape is an example of that, a developer who is, is showing and putting their money where their mouth is and not just out to make as much profit as they can, but truly creating quality development to uplift our communities. What is it that you think residents or HOAs or neighborhoods could do to help with engaging the developers? Um, I think it's making sure that we are supporting our elected officials and voting like uh, Council Member Reeves for elected officials who are very diligent about this issue, because I'm thinking of some um, elected officials that I know that have created, and many of our municipalities have this, where it's requirements for developers and sometimes developers get very angry if they're for if there's certain workforce housing requirements or if by law the city council puts in some legislation and requirements that in order to develop here in our community you have to do x y and z so some of it is supporting our elected officials to to help them feel empowered to create some of those requirements that aren't always so popular with the developers um, so that's one thing. And then also just being strong community members like what we're doing now, being willing to not give up and um, be like the folks that came before us who saw problem after problem in our community, challenge after challenge, but didn't just throw in the, in the towel and didn't just accept anything that um, some developers will throw at us, but continue to have meetings like this, to be in partner with elected official like council member Reeves and his team and my office um, and just figure out how we creatively can get things done and just not giving up and just staying at it. So, and, and not getting frustrated, which, you know, we all do, but we're all in this together. So, you know, it's no perfect answer or perfect solution, but it's just all of us continuing to, to keep on keeping on. Hey, Tamiko, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Sheila had her hand up for a minute. Go ahead, Ms. Sheila. My, uh, my question was answered. Thank you. Awesome. And, and my, my office is open and council member, we want to learn from you all and hear from you all because sometimes there are needs in the community that maybe we are not thinking directly of and maybe we have some creative resources or I can work with my team of attorneys to kind of work within the bounds of the law and creatively figure out how to address things. Just like the young lady asked about the senior repair or could a nonprofit be created? I think I'm always of the mindset of just because something 
isn't the way that we want it today or doesn't exist, that doesn't mean that we can't put our heads together and figure out a solution and figure out a way um, to make it come about. So I'm, I'm open to that. And I just, I look forward to continuing to work, work with everyone just because we're all in this together. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do want to thank you to, to take the time out to come out of your day to come speak with us about this uh, executive director and congratulations <laughs> as well deserved as you are absolutely uh, a subject matter expert and i think that you are um a well needed fit to this organization as uh you bring something uh of knowledge and of experience to help us along here and to all let's uh, fortify our collaborative effort and progress forward in development in and around the area and so uh, that's Congratulations and thank you again. Let's thank you. Give you a hand clap right there. So uh, you are truly five star. Thank you. And we look Come forward to working then. with you. Go ahead. Somebody had their hand up. Um, HOA, a uh, Fairwood HOA. Um, but they I, there. My question was, uh, how are you doing doing tonight, Miss Ray? Great, thank you. Y'all are inspiring me, so thank you. <laughs> uh, my question is, um, with that, uh, would speed bumps come on the could speed bump come on the deck grant? You know, I think that's typically. Let's see, it was housing, education, jobs, and small business. So you know, um, I mean, I think that we can be creative because. I mean, typically that's something that the county or the municipality would address, you know, infrastructure needs. But I mean, if there's an applicant who makes a case and especially because speed bumps do impact all of those other needs. I mean, you don't we don't want people flying through our neighborhoods because it's dangerous and it takes away from companies that want to locate there and bring jobs or quality housing and a quality of life. So we I mean, we we're very open when it comes to those grant funding. But in addition to that, um, like I said before, perhaps there's ways and, and folks at the county that we can reach out to and just see if there's some county funding that can address that because you know, it's a quality of life issue. We don't want people speeding through our neighborhoods. And I, I know there are, you know, neighborhoods in, in Buckhead all the time that the community comes together and they get speed bumps um, put in their neighborhood. So there, you know, I can, I can look into it and, and try to address it or that is our grant application is, you know, is, is open and, and very open for that, whatever well, community issues there are. Well, if you could, could you work with me? My name is Diane Johnson on trying to find out how we can get some speed bump in the Fairwood uh, community because we are just having too much speed and running stop signs. Um, okay, I will. And, and you know, perhaps this is easier than we think. You know, there I know there are uh, commissioners who care and there's funding at the county so I, I can definitely look into it okay thank you mm -hmm. awesome you have, another hand. you have another hand uh councilman is sharon yes sharon jackson good evening everybody i since you're talking about those speed bumps I'm just wondering, since we have all these cameras in the areas where we got these schools, what is the possibility of us having cameras on the main streets? Because they do speed up and down just like it's the motor speedway out here. And the thing about that, they, can, they, they damage your, your yards, your mailboxes, they tear up your grass. I've had to have my water meter replaced before by the city mailboxes and it's just you know we're paying taxes out here and i know that things are happening i suppose as fast as they can but we could certainly use some cameras out here because i'm not even saying all these people live in south fulton county they may be coming in from other areas this, but i think this. if we got these cameras up on buffington road we got them up on Fairwood, I believe. Why can't we have them out on flat shows and 
at some of our main points to cut down on some of these wrecks and different right. things. Yes, ma'am, Miss Jackson. I think that's uh, uh, out of the scope of the peer view from what this discussion is, but that is an issue. <laughs> and I think that's a municipal issue uh, that we have to take up here and, and, and locally. So, um, but that's out of the peer view of what uh, Ms. Sarah is, uh, and the Development Authority is uh, bringing and uh, out of that grant funding, because that is something that we are discussing right now, but that's within the uh, municipality of Sarah. And I do understand that, Councilman Reeves, yes, but I just took this opportunity because I miss most of your meetings on Mondays, but we, we do need some of these things addressing. So I'm just trying to get in where I can fit in. Yes, ma'am. But, ma I, but I knew that was out of the purview of what this discussion was about. And I do apologize for that. But since she was giving us such good answers, I thought, <laughs> well, I better jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> you know, they said the one that makes the squeaky wheel oh, gets yeah. the attention. So <laughs> right. I'm yes, squeaking this evening, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. But also, you know what, council members, she made me think about um, after this grant program, maybe I can talk with you about if there is another type of uh, program that we could create at the authority to maybe work with different um, elected officials like yourself, you know, even if it's for sometimes there are, you know, speed bumps or cameras that are that don't cost that much, you know, so maybe there's some program that you and I could try to create, you know, to, to help address some issues like that. Okay, I love working with you on that. I, we can definitely see that. But and again, there's a again, whole you, process. Huh? And there's a whole process with those speed humps, what we're trying to work out. Right. The speed humps process, you know, there's a process with that. Right. As she said, that it gets frustrating at times because it's like it's some things are simple, but we can't let our frustration uh, cause us to throw in a towel and give up as we must press on to progress forward. And so, um, you know, success is nothing without sacrifice. So it just doesn't exist. And so um, but again, is, is that all the questions for Miss Sarah that we have for Miss Sarah? Well, I want to personally thank you again for coming on. And so uh, you have been a tremendous uh, insight and uh, a way to start off August. <laughs> and so yeah, as yeah. the right, and the start of something new. And so uh, as this is the first and you are the first here to come on and uh, thank you again for this information and for educating uh, the constituency. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you, council member. All right. Okay. We Thank have you. some announcements. Uh, Bellwood has an event coming. You want to tell us about it? Yes, go ahead, Sister Johnson or uh, Miss Collins. Tell us about this uh, Thursday at the uh, Bellwood Elementary School. Okay, uh, just Miss Johnson. Uh, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Mr. Uh, Alton Mattis. We, we had him to go up to the to the house that we cleaned up up there and get the trash that somebody had dumped. So I just want to over at uh, Jacobs, I want to shout him out. They did pick up the trash for me. Okay, the school festival will be Thursday at Fairwood Elementary School. Um, we need help. We're going to wrap hot dogs. We'll need to be there at uh, two o'clock to wrap hot dogs and we'll give out chips and water. We will be giving that out before, before the parents go in to meet the teachers. Uh, we'll be on the front side of the school. Um, we will cook the hot dogs at the school. We have guys from the Fairwood Homeowner Association. We'll do the cooking of the hot dogs on it and we will wrap them there. Any questions? No, ma'am. Location and time, one more time. Bellwood Middle School. Need to be at the school around two o'clock. Yeah. What day? Bellwood Elementary. Bellwood okay. Elementary. Thursday, the fourth. Yes. Yeah, that's the fourth. I'm sorry, I don't hear me. Right. Tomorrow, which is, um. August 2nd is National Night Out. That will be with the police, 
the um, over in the LA Fitness parking lot area off of Old National. That is going to be between 6 to 8 p.m. It will be, um, I saw them planning, it's going to be a huge event. All of the police, um, they're bringing the helicopters and bobcats and everything. The fire department will be participating. There'll be entertainment, nonprofit organizations, um, for-profit organizations. So come out and support that. We also have Taste of Soul Food coming this Friday for the Friday Night Live at Burdett Park. And so um, they're going to block off that parking lot because they're going to have a stage and multiple food trucks and all kind of entertainment and vendors. So the parking for that will be across the street at the school parking lot. And then you'll have to walk across the street. So they're going to be bouncy houses and all kind of stuff. So make sure you are there for that. We are launching our um, small business summit for startup for um, Saturday. August 13th. The flyer should be going out tomorrow. That's a Saturday for startup, 10 to 2 over at Burdett. And then September 20th, Tuesday um, for existing business, 10 to 2 at Burdett. So both of those will be um, coming out this week. So I'm giving y'all the heads up that that is happening for those of you. They'll be free and they'll have lunch included. All righty. Uh, we were right up on uh, seven thirty, so it is the All floor, right. yes, Councilman Reeves. Yes, well, look here. Thank you for each and, each and every one of you for taking time out of your day and joining this call. And I hope that you got a little bit of education on the process uh, as it relates to the Fulton County Development Authority. I will be inviting the South Fulton Development Authority on as well, and to see what we have uh, internally going on with them and where their direction is headed. And so, um, but look out for that. And uh, just join us all tomorrow for um, National Night Out. Uh, it's going to be, you know, a, a good honor to celebrate our public safety officials. And so, and also to the time to talk about the things that, you know, what are their plans and what are they going to be doing to address some of these cameras and catch some of these speeders and traffic uh, and, and track the trailers uh, that are going down illegal routes and coming up and down flat shows and uh, Buffington and uh, Mallory and Old Bill Cook and Bellwood. So uh, just address some of your community concerns that, that they all will be out there tomorrow to answer uh, these questions. And uh, thank you again for taking time out of your day to join us. And remember one thing, that I love you. You can't do nothing about it. And uh, remember all the positive that happens here in the city of South Fulton as uh, we have a long way to go. And so, we, you know, it's the start of a new, uh, era, start of a new beginning, and it all begins with you because you are the best part of the city. Thank we you. Got, we got one more. We got to do this one because we have a celebrity in the house. Miss Thomas is here and she has a comment for you. I'm right. going to, I just want to make this positive for Corey. Um, so, your new firefighter recruits for the city of South Fulton, one is our very own, my son. He's one of the 15. He played in your basketball game against the police officer. So, hey, District 5 is represented in that new firefighter recruit class. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes, he is City Stop Fulton uh, all the way. He played at Burdett Rec Center for uh, Rec. He went to uh, Bethune. He went over to Hakeville. So, we got one of our own. That's a new firefighter recruit. Hey, yes. Yay. Yes. 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 Oh, we forgot to so. say. Fire, um, the fire and police basketball championship. Fire was the winner. Mm -hmm. Yep, and he, he played win. in your game. Yep. Right. <laughs> and and uh, this was... this Friday will be um flag football champion between police and fire. Yeah, so I'll come out and celebrate. I, I mean, it's a good time, and uh, uh, you know, and we have spades, and we have, there was some spades tournament winners, and. Uh, we have trophies for everybody, so everybody can get, you know, take some home and uh, as champions or something to remember uh, their their moments by. So that's awesome. Again, Miss Thomas, that's that's good news to hear. Thank you so much. That's you know somebody who is you know cradle to career uh, right here in the city of South Fulton, and that's an example of it in the fifth district. And so that's what we want yes. to produce, and that's what we need. And so and that's actually what we have. 
And uh, that's something to be proud of. And uh, I'm proud to represent the fifth and I'm proud of everybody uh, who is in here. Uh, like I said, y'all are truly the best part of the city. And so uh, keep staying engaged and keep being informed and keep being educated. And so thank you all and y'all have a good night.